if we use Easter's okay. If we use lithium aluminum hydride to reduce an ester, this is what happens. You're left with R C H two O H plus this bond breaks away and we get and we get two different alcohols. Okay. One from this side and another from this side. Alright? So lithium aluminum hydride and uh, lithium aluminum hydride breaks this CO single bond over here and we are left with two different alcohols. Okay. Fine. So as we saw that lithium aluminum hydride being a very strong um, reducing agent is very elegant in reducing carbonyl compounds, even it can break the bonds of um, esters giving us two um, two sets of alcohols but this is not the case with NaBH4 okay this is a very moderately strong reducing agent which only changes or only reduces carbonyl compounds it does not react with any other thing okay it does not react with any other uh, thing rather the other than carbonyl compounds it only converts aldehydes and ketones into its corresponding alcohols unlike uh, lithium aluminum hydride it does not react with esters okay so it does not react with um, carboxylic acids even okay so lithium aluminum hydride has a very wide scope of attacking spectrum okay so it can attack carbonyl compounds not to mention carbonyl compounds it can attack esters it can attack acids and so on okay so sodium borohydride is limit limited to only carbonyl compounds it cannot reduce even a double bond okay it, as talking in the uh, talking of the case of lithium aluminum hydride it also cannot reduce double bonds but when the double bonds are in conjugation with the carbonyl group it can reduce them okay so not in the case of NABH I'll deal with some specific examples that will show uh, the working of show the exact procedure how sodium uh, NABH4 and lithium aluminum hydride actually work okay so same is the case with activated hydration hydrogenation okay it just reduces the carbonyl compounds to its corresponding alcohol okay fine so it's just a very mild reducing agent same is the case with sodium and ethanol okay fine so the, this concept will be more clear when we when we deal with some specific examples okay fine So as we saw that esters can be converted to its alcohols while we use RMGX. A very elegant way of preparing cyclic compounds is is a uh, is involved in this case where an ester say R CO2 ET is used with maybe CH2 I take uh, 5 
and uh, MGBR I take MGBR so as we saw that this Grignard reagent attacked ester twice so rather than attacking the same ester with two molecules of RMGX we are using here uh, but a peculiar Grignard reagent which has two nucleophilic centers okay so this is what is this is what happens we are left with a cyclic compound okay we are left with this cyclic compound fine so it's a very a uh, simple reaction that has a beautiful application in synthesis of uh, uh, cyclic tertiary alcohols okay from which uh, alicyclic hydrocarbons can be synthesized okay now if we use h3o plus over here what happens is that dehydration reaction takes place so we are left with Okay, now if we want to prepare the corresponding alkane, we just use uh, activated hydro um, activated hydration uh, hydrogenation, all right, and we get this. So I hope you understand this reaction, right? Because esters are attacked with Grignard reagents twice to give us tertiary alcohols. In this case, what I used is that I used a specific Grignard reagent which had two nucleophilic centers so it attacked the same ester molecule with its two nucleophilic centers to give rise to this cyclic structure okay with this cyclic with this cyclic uh, tertiary alcohol we got hydrocarbons like this so it's a very beautiful way of synthesizing hydrocarbons okay fine moving on